Hi guys, it's Debbie, and today I would like to speak about some of the films I am eager to watch in 2018. In the world of cinema, the last weeks of a year and the first couple of months of the next one are totally film awards oriented, and everybody seems to speak just of the denominated films. It's only after the end of the Oscar rush that we actually stop and start to think about all the other upcoming films in a year. So today I would like to speak of some other interesting movies which will be released in 2018 and which I'm excited to watch. I'm going to follow this list chronologically because it helps to understand how close or far away a film is from today. For example, the first film I am excited to see is Red Sparrow, which will be released on the 2nd of March, so just a few days from today. This film stars Jennifer Lawrence as a Russian spy, in particular in the role of a sparrow, so a secret agent which has been taught to use everything, including her body, to seduce, manipulate and eventually overpower an enemy. I love Jennifer Lawrence and this film is actually directed by Frances Lawrence, which worked with her on the Hunger Games saga, and which also created other films I enjoyed, such as um, I Am Legend or in particular Constantine. The setting of this film also vaguely reminds me of Salt, another film about Russian spies with Angelina Jolie in the lead role. So there are many elements which are feeding my curiosity and interest at the moment. Another film which is set to be released very soon is Wes Anderson's Isle of Dogs, which will be available in cinemas on March 23rd. Isle of Dogs is an animated film set in a future Japan in which dogs have been quarantined on a remote island to avoid them spreading the canine flu. One day a boy reaches the island in search for his dog, thus sparking a much larger adventure. Isle of Dogs presents an incredible voice cast which includes Edward Norton, Brian Cranston, Scarlett Johansson, Tilda Swinton, Frances McDormand, Bill Murray, Greta Gerwig, Jeff Goldblum, Ken Watanabe, Courtney B. Vance, and Yoko Ono, just to name some. Already from the trailer, we can point out some of Wes Anderson's trademark filming features, such as the precise use of symmetry, the point of view from above shot, the recurring cast, a precise colour palette, the fusion of melancholic elements with more comedic or ironic ones. So all of this, together with what looks like a very interesting plot, made me very excited for this film. Skipping forward to June the 29th, we have Sicario 2 Soldado, a crime thriller starring Benicio del Toro and Josh Brolin and covering the theme of Mexican drug cartels. The trailer to this film does not reveal too much about what is actually going on, but we get a general idea of the dark reality we should expect to see portrayed on screen. And I loved Denise Villeneuve's first chapter, Sicario, which was released a couple of years ago. It was an excellent thriller and cinematographer Roger Deakins definitely helped to convey the idea of a brutally dark reality. But instead of fearing for a worse sequel, it looks like the work has been passed on to very good hands, because this second chapter is directed by Stefano Sulima, whose works include, for example, Gomorra, the award-winning series about the Mafia in the south of Italy. And then we have cinematographer Darius Wolski, which, for example, has worked on The Counselor, The Crow, All the Money in the World, so other films which depict a very grim reality. At the beginning of October, instead, we have a Venom starring Tom Hardy, Michelle Williams and Riz Ahmed. The trailer to this film looks absolutely amazing, and I am intrigued by it, even if I have little to no knowledge about this character, if not his role in Spider-Man 3. And I'm also not totally informed about the director, Ruben Fleischer. I just saw two of his works, Zombieland, which I enjoyed, and the series Santa Clarita Diet, which I didn't, but which somehow had me watching until the very last minute. Acting-wise, I love all of Tom Hardy's work. I think he is an exceptional actor. You should definitely check him out in The Revenant, Mad Max Fury Road, Dark Knight Rises, Inception, Dunkirk, and I've always liked Michelle Williams' work, so I'm very excited for this film. The week after Venom will be released, on the 12th of October, we will be able to see First Man, a drama film based on the life and work of Neil Armstrong, the first man to set foot on the moon. I have no idea how this film will be, we don't have a trailer up to date, but I'm very curious about it, on the one hand because of the nature of the plot, on the other because it is directed by Damien Chazelle, which is famous for, co for a completely different genre with films such as Whiplash and La La Land. So I'm curious to see even a trailer for now, just to see how this this concept will be brought on screen by the director. The film will star Ryan Gosling, which was also a lead role in La La Land as Neil Armstrong, and First Man will be released during an award-eyeing season, so if this film is good we could potentially see Chazelle 
back on stage for an award next year. November instead will give us Fantastic Beasts The Crime of Grindelwald, the continuation in the Fantastic Beasts saga which will comprise five films in total over the course of the years. When Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them was uh, announced a couple of years ago, as a Harry Potter fan I was both thrilled but also slightly anxious, slightly fearful. I was scared that it would only be a money-making move that would have ruined the magical world we had all loved for years. But it didn't. Fantastic Beasts was amazing and it left me craving for more, for more facts, more information, more magic. And everyone is back this year. Eddie Redmayne as Newt Scamander, Johnny Depp as Grindelwald, Catherine Waterston as Tina, Ezra Miller as Credence, Dan Fogler as Jacob Kowalski, and then the newcomer Jude Law as Dumbledore. The film will be directed by David Yates which was the eye before the previous Fantastic Beast and behind um, uh, The Order of the Phoenix, The Half God Prince and The Deathly Hallows Part 1 and Part 2 all in the Harry Potter universe. It said the film that will conclude this list today and which will be released on Christmas Day is a movie for which I am more intrigued rather than thrilled, and that is Bohemian Rhapsody. This film is based on the work and music of world famous band Queen, and if I'm not mistaken it should focus on the life of lead singer Freddie Mercury. I know nothing about directors Brian Singer and Dexter Fletcher, but I am familiar with some of the writer's works instead, such as Anthony McCartan's screenplay for The Theory of Everything, which I loved. I am a huge fan of Queen and of Freddie Mercury, so this film will be a curious experience for me. At the moment I feel more nosy and inquisitive about it, rather than thrilled. I am, I could say, afraid of how the band will be portrayed on screen. I am nervous that there will not be the same level of charisma, the same overwhelming feeling of the power of music their songs convey. But at the same time, we cannot avoid a Queen film forever. And everybody, including me, is aware that no actor could ever replace an artist or a character. So I know all of this is just my silly preconception before even seeing a trailer about the film. So I should just relax and openly enjoy the movie. And this film wraps up most of everything going on in the film world this year. 2018 will see the release of many other films, some of which could even be better than the films on the list today, so we'll just have to keep on watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did make sure to subscribe and I'll see you soon, bye!